Well, hi everyone, I'm Thomas Kincaid and welcome to Ivy Gate Cottage. I have the pleasure of showing you a new painting today. And before I do, I wanna mention how, as I look back over my career, it is so amazing to me the pieces that God seems to have put together uh, to fashion me as an artist. Um, thinking back, I know the early artists of the Western American scene, painters like Albert Bierstadt, Thomas Hill, William Keith, and others, uh, were so influential on me. And I didn't even at the time realize how influential they would be. But I think the painting I'm gonna show you now will prove just how much those artists touched me, shaped me in my own creative vision. In about 1880 or so, Bierstadt was actively painting through Yosemite Valley. And I wanted to capture the scene that he had painted in one of those sketches. It was a beautiful setting featuring the waterfall uh, cascading down from the twin peaks that you see there that form the heights from which Bridal Veil Fall drops. But I had no way of knowing if that scene were imaginary, as is so often the case with artists, or if this was a real place. So in searching out the location, I came upon the setting, which became this painting, The Mountains Declare His Glory. Now, Bierstadt was known for carrying his paints out on location, out into the wilderness, where he would pack his easel on horseback and set up in the middle of nowhere and begin to make his sketch. Now, I try to do the same thing myself as an artist. There's nothing more fun than packing my paints on the back of a horse and heading into the wilderness to do a study of some beautiful mountain landscape or a creek or a meadow. Nothing excites me like being in the great outdoors. One thing about Yosemite, it gets into your system and you want to return again and again. I painted a view of Artist Point many years ago that became well known because of its association with the National Park Service and uh, it was used as a poster that raised funds for national parks. That was back in the late 80s and throughout my career I have painted Yosemite Valley time and time again. You know, interestingly, I first discovered Yosemite Valley in person uh, in my early 20s, all through my childhood. Even though I grew up just a few hours from Yosemite Valley, I had never been there. And then when I did first see it, oh, how overwhelming it was. And as an artist, I was drawn to it. I wanted to capture it in ways that would suggest some of the grandeur, but also the sense of God's holiness, his sense of reverence that you experience when you're overwhelmed by those beautiful mountains. It's spectacular, isn't it? Yosemite Valley has got to be one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Now, as an artist, I've drawn inspiration from this valley for years, and it never ceases to amaze me how the beauty and the grandeur seems new every time I come. Now, as I worked on the sketch for this, I hiked across the river and set up my easel in a vantage point out in the rocks. Uh, and as the stream was whispering and murmuring, making its way past me, I set to work. Now, I'm not too far from a location. In fact, I think this probably is the exact location where Albert Bierstadt painted in the 1880s. You know, there's something about being an artist and being on location. Uh, I can't explain it to, to artists who tell me now I don't want to do that. And I try to explain and they say, well, I get it just as much by just going on location and maybe taking my sketchbook and taking a few photographs and coming home. Well, believe me, it's a different experience when you sit down and you're watching the waterfall and you're watching the mist go over those mountains. What a fascinating and beautiful uh, statement of God's grace as we look out at this setting. John Muir called the Sierra Mountains the range of light. 
And as I sat there along the Merced River working on the study for this painting, I was amazed at how true that is. The light would just cascade over those mountains, sculpting it in different fashions so that at times it appeared flat and then all of a sudden it would emerge with deep relief. Now as I was working on the painting, I had this flight of imagination when I began to imagine how wonderful it would be to set up a camp and actually live on the edge of the river. And that reminded me of the Miwok Indian Village that is there on display in Yosemite Valley. And I began to think how wonderful it would be to blend those beautiful uh, redwood bark structures into the surrounding forest. And so we see the Indian Village with a campfire going and a few of the Miwok Indians uh, enjoying their beautiful scenic setting. Well, life in a Miwok village is fascinating, and I could just envision the lifestyle of setting up uh, your tent here in the wilderness and being able to live amongst the trees, the birds, the beautiful surrounding mountains of Yosemite. This village is a Miwok village, and the Miwok is a tribe of Indians that lived in and around this region all through Northern California, particularly here in the Yosemite Valley, they were known for these beautiful bark structures. The bark had to be cured, meaning that the tree had to be on the ground for at least two years before it would be loose enough to come off. And once it was able to be taken off, it was then created into these long strips where they would actually cut it down and lay it up piece by piece. Winding through the bark was the different roots. Uh, that they had vines that they would gather from the ground, that formed strapping to hold the bark in place. Now the Indians would try to have sand on the floor, that was the nearest thing they could find to a soft, supple, dry surface. Even at that, it would get a little bit damp. Now they could pile rocks up in the entrance and that would keep some of the rainwater from coming through, but these were mostly summer structures. This was something they would perhaps gather in to get out of that summer heat, and uh, if a rain shower would come, it was a great place to retreat. But for year-round living, it was probably a little chilly. The mountains declare his glory. Uh, what a marvelous thought. The scripture that talks of the heavens declaring God's glory. And I began to ponder that, that all aspects of nature are a way to reflect God's goodness to his people. It's as though nature is our chance to see God's grace, his love for us in a true form every day as we walk through the woods or sit beside a still stream and just ponder how good God is. That's really the theme of this painting. The mountains are a symbol to me of God's goodness. He gave us this sense of an abundant earth. The great outdoors is always around us, speaking of God's glory. Well, I've talked so often about what the paintings mean to me. But what's even more important to me as an artist is what the paintings mean to each of you. It's something that never stops amazing me how God can use a painting. Uh, it brings a message silently into the life of another person. That to me is the ministry of the painter of light. It is a chance to bring God's light into the homes of others. I hope this painting, The Mountains Declare His Glory, uh, will bring a little light to you. God bless.